This video will discuss section 13.2, which covers formulas for the sum and difference of two angles. Now, the thing that we have to be very careful with when dealing with trig functions is that we cannot just add and subtract things when they're inside a trig function. Um, again, these are the graphs for sine and cosine. You should be familiar with them by then uh, from all we did in chapter 12. Um, the, the one that I kind of want to point out here is this sine of negative a. So if, for instance, we pick sine of negative uh, pi over 2, which would be here, uh, we can see how that would get us the opposite sine uh, if we do sine of pi over 2. Uh, so um, what this is saying here is that sine is uh, not symmetric about the y-axis, but it is kind of rotationally symmetric. If you want to think about it, if you rotated it, uh, 180 degrees or, or pi, you would get uh, your point up here. So if we pick a point in the negative direction, it's actually negative or the opposite sign of sine in the positive direction. And cosine's a little bit nice, nicer because it is symmetric. So cosine of a negative angle is equal to cosine of that positive angle. Uh, you can see here at pi over 2, at pi, we get those same values because it is symmetric. But again, what I want to point out here is that sine of a plus b is not sine of a plus sine of b. We cannot distribute trig functions. They don't work that way because these are fractions. Um, and we can't just distribute an angle and get the same fraction. Um, so what we do get is that sine of a plus b, and you should have the formula sheet uh, that goes along with this chapter uh, that lists all of these uh, and the ones that we'll get to later. Uh, sine of a plus b is sine of a times the cosine of b plus cosine of a times the sine of b, and if we do subtraction here, it just simply changes that sign in between those two. Uh, cosine of a plus b is cosine of a, cosine of b, minus sine of a, sine of b, and the opposite, cosine of a minus b, will get you a plus sign in between, but again, those same functions. So we have to be very, very careful here. Uh, again, we cannot distribute, and we need to make sure that we remember these identities. So if, for instance, we want to prove that sine of theta plus pi, and again, pi is just a number in this case, equals negative sine of theta, then uh, we look at our identity, sine of a plus b. So sine of theta cosine of pi plus cosine of theta sine of pi, so we just kind of switch those order there, we got a plus in between. Now we know cosine of pi, we know this value. Cosine of pi is negative 1. Again, you kind of look up here at the graph, cosine of pi, cosine of pi, pi is right here, cosine of pi is negative 1, so that's one of the ones we should remember. Uh, likewise, sine of pi is 0 here. So you should remember uh, the basic trig functions, and again, if you need to go back and look at that unit circle, please do. Make sure that you at least have uh, what happens to sine and cosine at the increments of pi and pi over 2. Uh, so uh, sine of theta times negative 1 is negative sine of theta. 0 times cosine of theta is just going to be 0, and we're left with negative sine of theta, which is what we wanted. Uh, cosine of 90 degrees minus theta, so we can use degrees as well as radians. Uh, again, we're going to look at our identities. Uh, cosine of an angle minus another angle is going to be cosine of that first angle times cosine of the second angle plus sine of the first angle sine of the second angle. And again, if you want to have that sheet kind of handy with you uh, when you're going over this, please do, because um, I don't want to keep having to kind of scroll back up and down. Uh, but you can see here, cosine of a minus b gives us cosine a, cosine b, so first, second, plus sine of first, sine of second angle inside.
Uh, again, cosine of 90 degrees. Now, uh, cosine of 90 degrees or pi over 2 is 0. So that's going to make this whole thing 0. Sine of 90 degrees, however, is 1. And this will get us to just sine of theta, which was what we wanted. So I want you to pause the video here and try example 16. So uh, very similar to previous examples, uh, do your substitution with your um, addition and subtraction formulas. Uh, sine of theta cosine 2 pi plus cosine theta sine 2 pi. Uh, again, sine of 2 pi is 0, so you're just le and cosine of 2 pi is 1, so you're simply left with just sine of theta. We have a few more examples in this lesson. The next one looks at cosine. We have cosine of pi over 4 plus theta, and we want this to end up being cosine of theta minus sine of theta over radical 2. So first thing you'll notice here is that we have a radical 2 in the denominator, which isn't typically common. We typically like to rationalize the denominator. Uh, so what we could do is rationalize it multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. Uh, square root of 2 times the square root of 2 would give us 2 in the denominator. And then we end up with the square root of 2 times cosine of theta minus sine of theta. Now, going back to our trig identities, our, uh, our formulas that we have for the sum or difference of two angles, uh, we know that cosine of pi over 4 plus theta is going to be cosine of pi over 4 times the cosine of theta. And then we're going to subtract the sine of pi over 4 times the sine of theta. Now, again, going back to the unit circle, cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. Uh, we bring down the cosine of theta. Sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2 as well. Those two would just happen to be the same thing uh, because they're at that 45 degree angle. And then we still have the sine of theta that comes down. Now we can combine these, um, factor out that square root of 2 over 2, and then we're left with cosine of theta minus sine of theta, or we can write this as a single fraction like we have here if we're trying to be consistent. Uh, we can write it as the square root of 2 times cosine of theta minus sine of theta over 2. So again, we're just really multiplying by those fractions. If you want to think about it being over 1, uh, we're just multiplying those fractions. And so we get to what we had up there, so we're good. So one final example here. Uh, what happens if we are given sine to be a specific ratio, and we want to find the remaining trig ratios that are given here? So suppose sine is 8 over 17, and if we want to go back to the trig ratios. Um, again, we can kind of first off think about this in terms of a triangle. Sine is opposite, so if this is our theta here, uh, sine is opposite, we've got 8 over hypotenuse 17, so we would need to find that side right there. We'll call that b. So b is going to be the square root of 17 squared minus 8 squared, which happens to be 15. And so we know that that is 15 there. So we know that this is all the, the or these are all the absolute value uh, numbers for the triangle. Uh, but then we also know that cosine is negative. So if you go back to where things are positive and negative, everything's positive in 1, sine is positive in 2, tangent is positive in 3, and cosine is positive in 4. Uh, so cosine is negative in 2 and 3, and sine is positive in 1 and 2. So you can see here how we have this matchup where sine is positive because we were given a positive, and cosine is negative uh, because that was the other piece of information given. So we know we're in quadrant 2. So what this really tells us is that b is actually negative 15 uh, because this triangle is actually kind of drawn backwards. Uh, the triangle we're actually looking for is over here in quadrant 2 and this would be negative 15. This would still be a height of 8 and it would still be a hypotenuse of 17.
So if we go back to our trig functions, cosine is going to be the adjacent side, so that negative 15 over the hypotenuse. So this is going to be negative 15 over 17. So now we have sine and cosine. We can find these remaining things using our sum and difference formulas. So we know cosine of theta minus pi. So cosine of theta minus pi is cosine of theta times the cosine of the second angle, pi, plus sine of the first angle, theta, and sine of the second angle, pi. Now we know cosine theta and we know sine theta, so we'll substitute those in as well. Uh, cosine of theta we just found was negative 15 over 17. Cosine of pi we know is negative 1. Sine of theta we were given is 8 over 17. And sine of pi is 0. So this whole thing here is just going to be 0. So we're left with negative 1 times negative 15 over 17, which is just 15 seventeenths. So that is our ratio for cosine of theta minus pi. And that makes sense that it's the same uh, amplitude here. Um, but again, if you think about shifting the graph by pi, uh, the amplitude um, would be a negative where we started. And then if you went through the cycle, if you think about cosine, you start at the amplitude and you go down. If you go through half the cycle, pi, then you end up with a, uh, the opposite amplitude, in this case 15 seventeenths, and we actually kind of went backwards by pi. So uh, sine of theta minus pi, again using our formulas, we have sine of the first angle theta, cosine of the second angle pi, and again we don't worry about the fact that that's negative, we're just using the formula, uh, and then we've got minus cosine of theta and sine of pi. Uh, again, we have sine and cosine of theta, so we'll substitute those in. Sine is 8 seventeenths. We know that cosine of pi is negative 1. Minus cosine of theta, we said, was negative 15 seventeenths. And finally, sine of pi, again, we know is 0. So again, that term there is going to go to 0. Uh, so we're left with negative 1 times 8 over 17, so negative 8 over 17. And again, if you think about the fact that this got shifted by pi, we'd have the same magnitude, but a different sign there. So I want you to pause the video here and try examples D and E, and then resume the video to check your work. So you should have found d uh, cosine of theta minus pi over 2 to be 8 seventeenths. Uh, again, if you kind of think about this as being only a partial shift, we're ending up looking a lot like sine. And likewise, <clears throat> and likewise for sine, if we only do that kind of quarter shift, then we end up looking a lot like cosine at 15 seventeenths. So this concludes the first video for section 13.2. Uh, the next video will look at identities for tangent and cotangent.